Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we're gonna talk about a couple of very interesting topics. The first one is gonna be about Quinton Araya, of course. So yesterday you saw his, I don't know if you can call it a meltdown or whatever on his Instagram stories. It definitely wasn't quite like Samson's, you know, he wasn't saying his body is failing or whatever. He was just basically telling us why he decided to stop working with Matt Jensen. I mean, it was a little bit dramatic, sure, but, you know, it wasn't that bad. Anyways, these guys have officially parted their ways. Now, after Quinton explained what happened and why it happened, people have kind of spoken what I think about the way Quinton addressed this whole situation, and I would say half of the people like the way he handled it, but the other half is not very happy because he said some words, you know. He was like, F working with a coach and I'll never work with a coach again. However, things are shifting, things are changing, his decisions are changing, which is totally acceptable, totally reasonable. He seems like he's not exactly in the best place mentally right now. I mean, who is? After a hard prep, and especially after you fail so badly, your head has got to be a mess. And he knows that. He knows that he needs some time to heal from this whole situation. But apparently, it doesn't seem like he's gonna continue going alone. Before we get to the part about his next coach, first let's check out what Matt Jensen has to say. And officially, as of right now, he made no statements about this. And it's very likely that he never will. That's what kind of a guy Matt Jensen is. He never really gets involved in any kind of drama. He stays out of it. Maybe he will write something, a little bit of something. If he does, I'm gonna make a video about it. But he made this post five days ago before Clinton fired him. And it's a lengthy text, it's about how they failed for the New York Pro and whatever happened and what are their future plans. So it's a lengthy text, we are not gonna read the whole thing, but let's read this part. He says, I'm not perfect, although that's what I aim for, it's impossible to hit every time. I'm still learning Quinton's body, I'm learning he has a sweet spot and balance between condition and fullness. If you push too hard in either direction, we don't get the best of either. That being said, I'm okay with the look this weekend. By the way, I don't think he should be, but let's continue. But I am looking forward to improving upon it, and I know that we can do that. More than anything, I'm proud of how Quinton conducted himself in the face of disappointment and the man that he is. He's a man of high character, and at the end of the day, winning is important. Hmm, I wonder if Matt still feels this way. Is he still proud of the way Quinton conducted himself? I'm not so sure at this point. I mean, those stories... I mean, he said stuff like, if you hire an event planner and he completely messes up your event, how are you gonna hire him again? Meaning, if you hire a coach and he completely messes you up for the stage, how are you gonna hire that coach again? That's exactly what he meant, so... It wasn't exactly super nice towards Matt. And that stuff like, F working with a coach, I'll never work with a coach again, and so on... He could have just made a post in which he wrote something short like I decided to part ways with Matt and that's about it. But no, no, he decided to explain everything to us, which I personally appreciate a lot. Hopefully you guys do as well. Maybe he said some things he shouldn't have said, but overall I'm fine with it. However, I don't know if Matt is. I don't think he's too happy about what happened. I'm sure he would hope that he gave him another chance to try to remedy this, to fix it for the next show or for the next season. But yeah, apparently Quinton lost his trust in Matt and I know how it is. It happened to me with a coach also. Like when you stop trusting someone, it doesn't matter how good they are with the other athletes or whatever you think they can do. If you don't trust them, if they mess you up once and you never had any success before that, it's really difficult to continue working with somebody like that. So what is Quinton gonna do next? In this post here he says, trust your instincts, believe in what you are capable of, impossible is nothing. So what does he mean exactly by saying trust your own instincts? Like, have as many carbs as you feel like, or do as much cardio as you think you should do, or fire a coach and hire a new coach if your instincts are telling you to do that. Because honestly it seems like he's gonna hire a new coach, actually an old coach who also happens to be his current employer, basically his sponsor, Dorian Hamilton, and he says, the only person I trust in any capacity at this time to help me with is the man right here, otherwise it's just big me. 
And if you guys watched my previous video, I said that he shouldn't prep alone. I mean, the only guy, really, the only guy who can do this successfully is John Jewett. But that's because John Jewett is like super scientific and super methodical. He has his beliefs and his beliefs are whatever science says. He is not going by his instincts, he is going by his knowledge. He also probably has another person to look at him, to consult with, but yeah, he sticks with the basics, with what he thinks works best, and like, he can do it. But that's extremely rare, and I don't see Quint being able to do that, so going back to Dorian, who knows his body very much, they worked together for quite some time, and they had some success as well, they brought pretty good looks to the stage, so I think that's a smart decision, if Dorian wants to take him back. But I'm sure that won't be a problem, again, these guys are working together still, of course, Quinton is sponsored by Dorian's company, so yeah, I think that's most likely gonna be the case here. He also addressed everything in this story right here, so he says, As I said, my intention was to be transparent and vulnerable about my journey and struggles as a bodybuilder and share with you guys my excitement with this next part of my journey. I'm done talking about this coaching matter because I don't wanna hurt anybody. If I hurt your feelings, I'm sorry, now back to more important matters, should I grow the beard back? So yeah, like I said, I'm very happy that he addressed this publicly, but let me show you a story that he posted today as well. I think you missed the point completely, man. I mean, listen, first of all, it's my life. If I want to hire somebody, fire somebody, if I want to hire seven coaches, it's my life. Who cares what, like, don't worry about what I do. Two, um... Listen, it's my career, it's my reputation, it's my mental health, it's my health on the line when I do this. So if I don't trust in the process completely, you think I should just give them another shot so that you don't judge me? <laughs> Get out of here, bro. Um, in regards to hiring another coach, you know, right now, no, no. Like, I, feel, I have a lot of emotions from that situation, you know what I mean? Um, I need to clear my head and I need to just be... I need to focus on what's in front of me, you know, and in order to do that, I just need clarity. I need some space, you know, and I'm going to enjoy this time by myself and grow as an individual. And I'm going to come out better. So as you can see, guys, he's all over the place. Actually, the story that I just showed you was before he announced that he might work with Dorian Hamilton. And once again, in my opinion, he should go back to Dorian just to help him out with the peaking, to keep an eye on him, to not let him do something drastic, like maybe he's gonna go for crazy fullness and, you know, show on stage completely out of shape. I think Dorian can help him, you know, peak right, but he can't really make that much of a change in short amount of time. I think he needs to go back to the offseason and then prep for the show and not lose any muscle. Who would help him with that the best? I think we all know the answer to that. I think it's pretty obvious. Everybody says it in the comments. Of course, it is Milos Archer. Samson Dauda, before he started working with Milos, he was an average pro. He had similar look to Quinton now. You know, he was definitely smaller, you know, taller guy with, with long limbs, not big enough, not full enough, but with a nice structure, very good aesthetics and so on. And Milos got him much, much bigger, much, much fuller with, I don't know, probably his crazy insulin protocols or whatever it was, I don't know. But I know what Milos is like in prep, like he has his low days when you are working on condition and you have your high days when you're working on fullness. And I don't know about you guys, but after that first off-season this guy had together. So it was like this, uh, Samson was first prepped by John Meadows, and when he passed away, he asked Milos to help him. And Milos helped him for a couple of shows, you know, to peak him and that's it, but then they continued working, they had an off-season. And Samson completely blew up. He was a different person in that offseason. And I remember exactly Fuad, I think it was Fuad asking him on a podcast, can you keep that new tissue? Is, is Samson going to be able to keep all that new size? Because it's probably a lot of water. And Milos' reply was, a human body is already like 70 or 80% water, however much. So what he meant was, yeah, he gained some fullness with water and carbs and so on, but we're going to keep that fullness. We're not gonna lose it, we're gonna keep that water, we're gonna get as lean as possible, but still keep the fullness in the size. And that's exactly what they did, and for the Mr. Olympia, Samson took 6th, because he was super, super massive and just lean enough. At this point, yeah, sure, Samson could get even more shredded, because he probably gained even more muscle, but at that point, that was the right call. And if Quinton started working with Milos now, and blew up, the way Samson did, and then kept that fullness and just got lean enough, but kept crazy fullness, 
I think that would be another Samson, basically. These guys are very similar. They are both very tall, with long limbs, with wide shoulders, with small waist. I would say Kriton probably has even a smaller waist and smaller joints, so maybe, maybe he's even more aesthetic. But if he went with Milos, I think that would be the perfect decision. But I don't know if Quinton is able to do something like that right now, if he's ready for it. I feel like he's very disappointed in coaches, in coaching in general. So he might go back to Dorian and, you know, try to do something kind of like his own thing with a little bit of help of somebody. I don't know if he's ready to do something new, completely new, something drastic like what Milos is doing, which would probably be completely different from what he got used to. But, in my opinion, that would be the right call, I know it's risky, I know it's stressful to try something completely different, but I think it would be the right decision, but whatever you guys think, tell me down below in the comment section, if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you want to see more content about bodybuilding on this channel, guys, stay here, subscribe, thank you so much for watching, see you soon, all the best, and bye-bye.